Hi, this is Rabbi Jeremy Gordon with the next instalment in my series of big ideas for a locked down world. Today, other people. I want to start with God, which is, of course, a perfectly good place to start. God exists in the rabbinic imagination, almost alone in the heavens, actually surrounded by angels. Angels are as close to godliness as it's possible to imagine anything being. But God is dissatisfied with that and therefore decides to create human beings. And human beings are a long way away from being close to God. And the angels in in Midrashic imagination can't understand why God doesn't just want to be with angels who are, after all, like God. The answer, it has to be, is that God values a relationship with that which is other, that which is different rather than that which is the same. When we talk about the relationship between Adam and Eve, we talk about the relationship between Ezer Konegdo, a helpmate against, that there needs to be some pushback in relationship for relationship to work. When we get to that great line of the Bible that Rabbi Akiva calls the greatest principle of the Torah, that you should love your other as you love yourself. That's a prioritization of otherness, of loving that which is different. If you only love yourself and that which is like you, you're in some ways self-idolizing. You are elevating yourself to be ultimate rather than elevating that which is different, which is what we're called to do. The great Kabbalistic commentator on the Zohar of Ashlag, the author of the Sulam commentary, had a phrase of Ahavat Hazolet, the love of that which is other. The great 20th century French uh, uh, theologian and uh, philosopher Emmanuel Levinas talked about alterity, the love of that or the the way in which we're moved by otherness and the encounter specifically of other people and even more specifically the face of other people. The face of otherness, said Levinas, breaks in upon us. It reminds us of our ethical obligations towards other people. But you can't get that by simply contemplating yourself. You need to be challenged by otherness to be moved into a world of ethical behaviour and decency and kindness. It's not just, of course, a religious idea. Malcolm Gladwell, the sort of writer on contemporary ideas, talks in his book The Outliers about how important it is in any kind of society to get outsiders' voices in to kind of correct and disturb groupthink. And that's how societies evolve and develop. If there is any great mystery to the extraordinary number of Jewish Nobel Prize winners or Jewish contributions to worlds of medicine or science or art or culture, surely it has to do with that idea that the Jew sits somewhat on the outside, both inside and outside society, and nudges society and improves society by being an outsider. So we need to find a love of that which is different. We need to prioritise difference above sameness as we look around at the world. Sartre said, hell is other people. This idea is the complete reverse, that godliness is expressed through the otherness of people. That, of course, gets me to one of my favourite Mishnayot, favourite ancient rabbinic teachings, that asks this question. What was the creation of the first human being like? It was not like the creation of kings of flesh and blood, for when kings of flesh and blood mint coins, they have a mould for the coin and every coin comes out the same. But when God, the king of all kings, mints a coin, they mint a coin and every coin comes out radically different in every way, our gender, our our colour of our skin, our abilities and our disabilities, our potentialities and who we could possibly become. In our difference, we hold the face 
of God on our own faces. Of course, coins have the face of their ruler upon them, but humans have so many different faces upon ours. That brings me to the issue of the colour of our skin. I'm recording this in the week in which, across the world, many communities, certainly our own, have been utterly horrified by the death of George Floyd, the killing of George Floyd, who seems to have died because of the colour of his skin. He had a policeman kneel on his throat for long enough to deprive him of life. We get into questions of the insidiousness and danger of racism actually from a religious place. The greatest 20th century prophet of that is probably Martin Luther King. But I want to talk about his good friend, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. Heschel and King met at what was called a conference on religion and race in January 1963. Heschel was invited to introduce Martin Luther King to the stage. He did with words from a speech that I want to leave you with today. At the first conference on religion and race, the main participants were Pharaoh and Moses. Moses' words were, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, let my people go. While Pharaoh retorted, Who is the Lord, that I should heed his voice and let the people go? The outcome of that summit meeting, Heschel continued, has not come to an end. Pharaoh is not ready to capitulate. The exodus began, but is far from having been completed. In fact, it was easier for the children of Israel to cross the Red Sea than for a Negro to cross certain university campuses. Heschel goes on. Few of us seem to realise how insidious, how universal and evil racism is. Few of us realise that racism is man's greatest threat to man, the maximum of hatred for a minimum of reason, the maximum of cruelty for a minimum of thinking. Perhaps, said Heschel, this conference should have been called not religion and race, but religion or race. You cannot worship God and at the same time look at man as if he were a horse. It's extraordinary encountering Heschel on that and just realising how much further we have to go as a worldwide society of humanity. But racism isn't just awful. It's also an expression of an even deeper failure to love and to prioritise and to consider how important it is that we have other people in our lives to improve us, to shape us and allow us to find out things that we cannot find out ourselves.